Hello and welcome to the Service Management webinar series sponsored by Western Computer. My name is Bill Harris and I'm a functional consultant here at Western Computer. And today's topic will be the service item in NAV. Here we've got the list of service items in the system and you can see today we're going to be focusing on computers. But the service items are the central record in the service module. They are added to service orders for servicing and for service contracts for billing out and maintenance. They are assigned to customers, as you can see here, and they can be associated to items in your inventory if you sell something that you later service. Today we're going to go through the fields on a service item at a high level just to give you a little bit more information about what is included in a service item. So let me move to a service item that I just started to create. I just clicked new on the service item. You can see we've got the number 42. We're using a number series here. So every service item has a unique number. And I'm going to choose an item that I sell. This computer that we were looking at earlier. And it asked me, do I want to assign the skill codes and service item group from the item to the service item? And I'm going to say yes. So you can see here what this has done is this has populated my description code, my item number, and also inserted the service item group in the search description. It's also copied over, as it mentioned, the skill sets and referred resources and that kind of thing to the service item. The description can be edited. So if you've got something more descriptive that means is more meaningful to your group or your customer, you can overtype this and type in something else if that's more valuable. But I do want to touch on the service item group code here. There are advantages to using this, setting it up on your item, of course, or then even if you're creating this manually for something you didn't sell, it can be very helpful. So let's open that up. You can see here we've got a code and a description. But then we're able to default in some other fields based upon the category or this group. We've got default contract discount percentages, default service price group codes, default response times, and create service item tick boxes. So here we've got a different response time than we set up in our global setup. We've got 12 hours versus 24, which was in our service management setup. So based upon this group, I can shorten my response time because it's something important. And I've also got this create service item feature. So if I sell this item on a sales order, then that will automatically create a service item for me. So that's, those are the big advantages to using the service item groups. Moving along, we've got service item price group codes. You can set up special pricing depending upon however you want to handle this. In this case, we've got some desktop pricing we'll put in here. If I had sold this, it would put in the NAV serial number, but if I didn't and the customer has a serial number on their piece, you can just manually type that in here. The status is a drop down field, an option field. You can see you've got four options. Usually it's owned or installed. If you sell this or create this, that's default, so we'll set it to installed. We won't touch on item components in today's webinar. You can see it's copied over the response time of 12 hours and given it a priority of low, and you can change that to something else. And these display in your service dashboards when you're looking at when you have to go and respond to something. The last service date, of course, will update transactually based upon our service orders. And then we get to these fields for warranty. I'm going to just put today's date in here. And then it will copy over from the defaults on the service management setup, the one year for parts and the one year for labor and the percentages of discount, 100% for parts and 50% for labor. And of course, they can be edited if you've got something special. You can define a preferred resource to service this. That's an option that came, again, from the setup on the item, or you can define that individually. Next, the customer and shipping fields here are set based upon the customer that you choose. Again, if you sold it, these would be defaulted in. The customer is coming to you. You would enter them in here, and then their addresses will default in. You can see it's put in their name and address and contact number, and it's even put it down here in the shipping tab so far. If the computer's on someone's desk, for instance, we're going to say this is on Bob's desk, you know exactly where it is within this customer. And then you do have the option of using ship to codes, just like you would on a service order, and that's an additional filter for when you're adding this 
service item to a service order. You can set the ship to code and it'll filter down to only those service items that are associated to that ship to code. Under the contract here, we've got a contract tab and a details tab. They're somewhat related to one another. Because I chose an item in my inventory, it knew the cost and the price. So it inserted those two values in here. In my service management setup, I've defined my percentage as 15%. So it has put in the contract value and cost based upon those percentages and these costs. So those are some things that can be put in for you. I've got a discount here that can be done as well. And if I had this on any service contracts, this filter would open up those contracts so I could see where they were. And lastly, you can associate a service item to a vendor by putting their vendor number in here and also any vendor item number that might be available for you. So those are the highlights of a service item in the service management system. Thank you for your attention and we'll see you next time.